All right, you know what, I think we've done a good job, so let's back on out of this menu and see just how much experience we've managed to generate. Oh, there we go, the experience meter is filling up on the left-hand side of my screen. Oh, we've hit level 42. Right. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today, welcome back to the fantastical world of Fallout 4, where today we're greeted by, oh my goodness, look at him. It's the handsome and majestic Riano Keeves, not to be confused with his cousin, Keanu Reeves, the most wholesome man in the universe. No, this is Riano Keeves. Rianu Keeves, unlike his cousin, is breathtaking, but in very different ways. He physically removes breath using his superhuman lungs to suck the very life force out of every single being in this universe. On our last Fallout 4 episode, we created the strongest damage weapon in the game, which is of course a melee weapon. It is quite simply a floating chainsaw, which is also simultaneously a baseball bat with a jet and nails put in the back of it. Okay, it's complicated. And then it turns out by eating a special combination of soup, you can basically boost your damage by 500%, giving you the ability to one-hit even the most strongest opponents this game has to offer. Now, Rihanna Keeves has broken oh so many parts of just about every single game that we've let him loose on, but today we're going to be destroying Fallout 4 to effectively turn Rihanna Keeves into a god. Now, he's already pretty incredible given the fact that he can one-hit every single enemy in the game, but he's lacking a few things. For a start, he's only level 15, which isn't actually very high. Sure, enemy in this game to an extent do scale with your level, but definitely the more levels you have, the more perks you have, and the more crazy damage you can do. For example, we could spec entirely down the melee tree and get a massive damage boost to our weapon which already does about 4,000 damage in one hit. So yes, that's what we're going to be doing today, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be taking Riano Keeves and making him the greatest and highest level character Fallout 4 has ever seen, using naturally, you guessed it, exploits. Because who can be bothered to sit down and do all of the quests that this game has? to offer when instead we can just cheese its mechanics and farm experience at a terrifying rate that makes basically no sense. Oh, it's going to be fantastic, Riano. Absolutely fantastic. So, welcome into the game. We're back right over at the Red Rocket truck stop and we need to actually kickstart ourselves off on one very special mission. Now that mission, oh, it just started in the top left of the screen there. There we go, the Mechanical Menace. This is a mission which is kickstarted by having the robotic DLC for this game and it starts when you hit level 50. Effectively, a caravan is in danger and needs us to go over and rescue them. So I'll listen to this radio and find out roughly whereabouts they are. Oh, it's good to be back in Fallout 4. So we're making our way over to the lovely What's Consumer Electronics, although there's a whole bunch of blood bugs here, which, you know, is fine because we can just, you know, one hit every single one of them. Oh, you angry, annoying little sausages. Now, basically, this mission is going to start off as a little bit of a challenge. We've got to try and protect Ada, who is a robot in this caravan. And provided we can do that, well, then we're going to get the start of a quest line, which we're going to have to finish off, and at the end of it, we're going to get one of the greatest bonuses ever. Oh, is that it? Yep, there's those lasers. Check them out. That's a fun caravan explosion. Now, this is where the robots are fighting. Lots of fun action is happening over here. Um, of course, Dog has found enemy. Yes, Dog, you have found enemy. Look at all of these super duper scary high level robots. Luckily, uh, we are able to technically one hit them all. So let's uh, one hit our way for a couple of these, although we're going to have to technically farm a little bit of health as I realize I didn't run into this fight with enough AP. All right, it's time to get some fights off and of course I one hit everything that I run into which is good fun. There's just one last swarm robot here and there we go. Job done. Lovely stuff. I'd say all in all a very decent fight. All right now after stealing all of the lovely components off of the floor what you're going to want to do is talk to this lovely robot Ada here and she's going to be able to tell us where to go for the next part of this quest. Now basically she was the defensive robot who was meant to protect all of these humans and of course as you can kind of tell she didn't really do the greatest of jobs because well everyone's dead. All right now I've got Ada to follow me and we've kick-started the mechanical men is mission. Uh, it basically means we have to go to general electronics which is nice and easy and then once we do that Ada is going to hand over to us the schematics for building a robot workbench and it's with this robot workbench that we're going to be able to generate very incredible statistics Ada. Very incredible statistics. Now of course why on earth would you want to become the most experienced character character in Fallout 4. Well, the main reason why is because Todd Howard in his infinite wisdom of game design decided to really increase the grind between levels and perks in Fallout 4, resulting in players wanting to exploit all of the systems and facets of this game which they absolutely hated. If only there was a way to exploit the dialogue options because my goodness the dialogue options. Now of course when I say that Todd Howard really made the level system a grind in this game, in comparison to other Todd Howard games, <laughs> Fallout 76, this game is a 
an absolute walk in the park. So that was when they really decided to spice up gameplay choices. And here we go, the General Atomics Factory, the destination. And hopefully it'll just be a nice simple boss fight and then we can generate ourselves some infinite experience. All right, now we're going to walk into this General Atomics Factory and I wholeheartedly predict we're gonna be immediately bombarded by a metric ton of angry robots. Now, as much as I would like to use some of my other weaponry to absolutely decimate the enemies, we're going to have to stick to our lovely powerful stabber because as fun as it is to use the power of Yorkshire tea indoors, it just really wasn't built for room fighting. I mean, yeah, not exactly the best for indoor warfare. I mean, I am getting some experience here, but I'm pretty sure I also just murdered my companion. Yep, sorry, Ada. Well, it's just a accident that can happen in this workplace. All right, let's kill that legendary robot over there. Legendary junkbot, are you able to resist this a bit? Am I just not clipping you correctly? Wow, that legendary junkbot is resisting my attacks. Right, I guess I'm gonna have to whip out the old classical stabber weapon and let's go. Do, 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 don't mind me. Just gonna walk up here, legendary junkbot and um, one attack, go. Not so legendary now, are we? Ah, perfectly balanced. Wait, why am I on fire? Oh, goodness. Now, of course, the real reason anyone has companions in this game is so that you can dump all of your random rubbish that you pick up in the wasteland into their inventories. Right, our adventures through the facility are going quite well. Uh, there is a enemy here, um, the other side of a closed door, although apparently we can still get to them somehow. Fantastic, so I guess that's the end of our mission. Can I open up this terminal, please, before you all murder me, robots? And there we go, that was the end. Um, honestly, pretty easy, to be honest. Right, let's just steal all of these lovely resources. We'll be needing all of this, probably. Right, and there we go, fantastic. This mission is completely and utterly finished. All it took was a one-shot of every single enemy involved. And now we're able to turn Riano Keeves from being a level 16 scrub chump to becoming the strongest and most powerful terrifying being ever created. All right, now all I need to do is go build a robot workbench. So it's straight back over to our lovely settlements. Right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Look at our majestic Riano Keeves. He's so beautiful, so handsome, and he's also about to become the most experienced man in the entire known universe. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to absolutely decimate this game in a way to generate stupid amounts of experience by doing very little. Now, there are many different ways of gaining experience in this game. You could go and do quests, you could defeat monsters, but monsters generally aren't repeatedly respawning, and even if they are endlessly respawning enemies, they don't give much experience and you have to wait for them to come back. So what if we had a plentiful supply of experience that literally just involved moving an object from point A to point B? That's right, the most experienced characters in this game are not the people who have gone out and saved the world, they're the players and characters who instead became Amazon warehouse logistics managers. And that's exactly what Rihanna Keeves is going to do today. He's got his hard hat on and he's ready to sign away his life and soul to Jeff Bezos. So let's get started on some cheeky exploitations. Right, and once you're back in Sanctuary Hills, what you're going to want to do is kickstart our shenanigans with the lovely robot workbench. This is the lovely building which we just unlocked by doing that quest line and we're bam, look at it, it's majestic. It's going to allow us to build our very own robots, which is exactly what we're going to do because robots are exceedingly broken. So we're going to build this lovely robot workbench and you'll notice we got a little bit of experience for that. Well, that's because actually just building things inside of your own base is a great way of generating experience. This lovely bin here, for example, we can slap it down and build it here. Look at that, four entire experience for building a bin. Isn't that wonderful? Actually, it's pretty bad, isn't it? So we need a way of generating even better forms of experience. There was an exploit in the game, which you can still get to work on Xbox, which is if you manage to unlock the ability to build the baseball man statue, which is basically like this green statue made of just concrete and copper, and you absolutely fill your entire base with just those statues, you can lag out the game to a point where you can continuously scrap and rebuild one statue over and over again and farm endless amounts of experience. The only downside is it takes a long time and doesn't work if your PC is able to run the game at anything above 2 FPS. And sadly, my PC can run the game at above 2 FPS. So we need to get cheeky. And for that, what you're going to want to do is of course build your lovely robot workbench, but also go over to the furniture and get yourself a container. Now any type of container is fine. I'm going to build a lovely cabinet because it's the most basic of containers and you're going to need this bad boy mostly because we need to steal some 
some resources. Trust me, it'll make perfect sense. Now, just before we get started, we actually need to finish the mission with Ada and get a lovely antenna mounted on her, else she's going to be complaining endlessly that we haven't completed her quest. So let's get all of that sorted. Right, yes, let's install a radar beacon on you so you can stop complaining and I can build robots of my own instead of just looking at boring robots like you, which don't provide infinite supplies of experience. Although, to be fair, Ada is going to be very important for this exploit because she not only allows us to build robots, but she's also going to be a pack mule. And pack mules, very important. Anyway, we install the radar beacon on Ada. That's fantastic. We can exit the little station. Lovely stuff. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, I just spoke to Riano Keeves and he's told me he has a once in a lifetime special opportunity for you. He's told me in his upcoming plans to destroy the entire universe, the first 7,000 people who like this video will actually be saved from Riano Keeves and his incredible wrath and godly looks. What a fantastical offer from this lovely gentleman. Such a fine upstanding citizen and an immortal deity and I am 100% not just saying this because if I don't praise him he will immediately evaporate me. All hail our brand new overlord Riano Keeves. And there we go we've managed to complete that lovely entire mission. We get a little bit of experience that's all lovely. But what we want to do is craft a brand new robot of our own. A new automatron. Look at these bad boys. They take up a whole bunch of resources but trust me what we're going to be getting from them it's going to be worth it. So let's make a brand new automatron. Now in that last mission we've managed to pick ourselves up an assaultron as well as a robo brain torso and trust me this is going to be fantastic. Now basic robots come with a protectron torso but we're going to swap this one out for an assaultron torso because it's necessary. Then what we're going to do is back on out and our robot is actually perfect. All it took was a single assaultron torso to make him and you know what let's name him. This is going to be the exploitobot 9000. There we go. Look at this lovely guy and fantastic. He is perfect. He's ready to be released on this world and mostly generate a huge amount of experience. So look at our lovely exploiter bot. He's fantastic, he's beautiful, but we don't actually really have to do anything with him. So what we're going to do is get started on our exploit. Basically we're going to be bugging out the UI in this game to allow us to do some very cheeky things and in order to do that we need to make sure that we don't have any resources in our inventory. So what we need to do is go into our workshop and take every single bit of scrap you have in your workshop lying around so that the game can't use it to actually stop this exploit. Then what you want to do is dump all of those various building components, also known as your junk, inside of this random cabinet so that you don't have access to it for building supplies. And then once it's all in there, talk to Ada. Now what we're going to want to do is do a little trade with her and just give her a few resources in our inventory. Nothing too crazy. Now that she has a few items in her inventory, that's perfect. She's set up to go. Now in order to really pull off this exploit and create the ultimate cheesy build, what you want to do is go for a very strange character build. In our case, we have Riano Keeve set up so that he has no intelligence. This means that the idiot Savant perk is way more likely to trigger and what this perk does is it gives you three times XP for random events. So basically when you would normally receive experience, this event has a chance to trigger and when it does, instead of receiving say 10 experience, you'll receive three times that and get 30. This is a lovely perk to have and it's going to make this exploit a whole lot faster because we're going to be receiving a lot of experience very quickly. Now what you're going to want to do is talk to your bugged companion, get them to stop glitching out on all the furniture and instead move to just around about here. Naturally it's going to take her about 47 minutes to navigate the terrain because as you can tell the developers spent a whole bunch of time on the goddamn pathfinding. God damn it Ada. Ada just get out of the corner that you're trapped in. Are you okay? Just move. Go. Oh these companions are so bad. Right fine. I can probably pull it off here. So what we're going to want to do is glitch the menu so that we're in a trade screen with Ada as well as also being in the editing screen of the robotic workbench. So how you're going to do that is get as far from Ada as you can whilst triggering her trade, move up close, then press the button for trade and before you have time for the dialogue window to open, press the robot workbench. Now you're going to notice we have three options. We can edit Ada or we can edit our brand new Exploitobot 9000. Of course, select the Exploitobot. Now if you're on PC, don't touch anything other than your arrow keys and the E key, um, otherwise you're going to absolutely break this exploit. And if you're on console then use, I don't know, the D-pad arrow keys, whatever it is. And what you're going to want to do is press down. And you'll notice that this screen is absolutely horrific because we have two layers of UI sandwiched on top of each other. We have the trade screen where we can move items from our companion and back again, as well as also the robot build screen, which is right down here at the bottom. And as you can probably see, this is horrible to look at, but it's all fine. It's necessary 
for the exploits. Not all exploits are pretty, ladies and gentlemen. Other than all of the exploits involving me, because I am the most attractive and handsome individual alive. All thanks to, of course, Yorkshire Tea Gold. Now, what we're going to do is press down once, and you'll notice we get to the torso category. Now, you can press E, although in my case, I like to press the right arrow, and this will move us into torso. Then you'll notice we have the Assaultron torso. Once again, press the right arrow. And now we are in this lovely section. Now, if you have a spare Protectron torso in your inventory, then you can just keep yourself hovered here. But in our case, we actually need to go right the way down to the Robo Brain torso because that's the only one we're able to mount because we have the mod lying in our inventory. And what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, quite simply, is destroy this game's balance by pressing the button E. Now, what happens when we press E, because we're sat in two menus at the same time, is we're going to mount the Robo Brain torso whilst simultaneously moving this one item of jet from Ada's inventory into our own inventory. So what happens is we're just going to press the letter E. Now all that happens is that the Robo Brain torso is removed, which is interesting because it was never mounted in the first place, and we've moved a single item from Ada's inventory into our own. Now what we're going to do is just press E again and move all of the items from Ada's inventory into our own. Now of course if you're using some complicated menus then you might need to occasionally wiggle your mouse over and press E, and there we go. Oh what's that? A little thing in the middle of the screen popped up. That little thing popping up was the game telling us that the idiot Savant fired, meaning we just gained three times experience. But you'll notice, how are we gaining experience? Well, the game is a little bit balked at this point in time, because I'm going to move on over here to my own inventory and start moving items over by mashing the E key. You see, for the game, what's happening is we're repeatedly mounting the Robo Brain Torso, which is a very valuable item, and by mounting it to any object in the game, you're going to be giving yourself experience, because that's how the game works. The game wants to reward you for building complex robots, so if you build a robot or attach a part to it, you get a little bit of experience. It's not much, and it's very much impossible to farm unless you're wanting to spend a whole bunch of time. In our case, I've just removed all of Rihanna O'Keeffe's clothes and moved them into Ada's inventory and generated a huge amount of experience. And I'm going to now move it all back. So what's happening is the UI is trying to mount the Robo Brain torso, giving us the experience for it, not actually mounting it because there are no resources around for us to actually mount it, but because we're able to press E and the game saying we can press E and it's a valid option because we have the trade window open, we can do it anyway. So once again, we're just going to move all of the objects back from Ada's inventory into our own. And every time we move an individual object, it's counting as a successful mounting of the Robo Brain torso, which gives us a whole bunch of experience, ladies and gentlemen. This is a portable experience farm. It doesn't take long, but my goodness, is it not powerful. And the spam continues. Let's move all those items straight back ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's fantastic. Who needs to go and help Preston Garvey or even go to the Institute to become a high level player? No, no, no. I have no intentions of finishing the main quest lines. I instead simply wish to just farm the Robo Brain Torso and become the highest level character in the game. Now, this is very good because it's one of the few ways to really get your character over a level of experience, which others would say is basically impossible. Using this exploit, you can generally get get to level 100 within probably the first few hours of the game. Getting to level 15 isn't too much of a challenge and then if you just beeline this mission it gets pretty easy. And this exploit is actually rather easy to repeat because at the end of the day you haven't lost your Robo Brain torso and your Assaultron torso is still mounted. So you can just back on out of all the menus, set up the exploit again and split the items between your and Ada's inventories and we're bam infinite experience. It really is as easy as that. And like I said, we are basically just an Amazon warehouse employee. Our job is to move an item from the right to the left and then the left to the right. We're not getting paid anything for this, mind you, but trust me, it's all fine. Now, of course, if you lack any of the resources in order to actually make a robot, which I'd be amazed considering how easy it is to actually find the resources. In fact, if you lack resources for anything in this game and you want to just exploit the system, well, what you want to do is simply get, say, raw concrete out from your settlement's inventory, plop it down on the floor, go into the settlement view, and then press the store and scrap button at the exact same time. By doing this, you can duplicate items. As you can imagine, this is perfectly fine and balanced and designed by Todd Howard to allow players to just perfectly cheese the system. This can then be used to great effect if you're actually scrapping buildings and storing them at the exact same time, which can be done with, say, the merchant stands in your settlement, allowing you to duplicate 
duplicate 5,000 bottle caps every time you do it. So of course it's a brilliant way of getting infinite caps. Just about everything in this game can be exploited. It's absolutely hilarious. I don't know how this has managed to be kept in considering how aggressive the developers were with patching out as many exploits as possible. But then again, I suppose you can take a look at a game like Fallout 76 where they had so many exploits and really tried to patch them out and yet there are still a million exploits in that game. I think my favourite one lately was that it was possible to become immortal by shooting a rocket at the ground of your feet provided it had the correct modifiers and then you could no longer take damage. Oh, what a truly unique gameplay experience Fallout 76 is. Alright, I'm going to speed up this process of just me mashing E and I'll get back to in a few moments time once I've hopefully gone up a few levels from level 16 which is where we started. Oh also Idiot Savant is more likely to fire if your character is less intelligent which is why I've deliberately kept Rihanna O'Keefe's at one intelligence despite the fact that he is of course the smartest man in the known universe. And the main reason why is because you don't actually need intelligence stats to do this exploit. Logically you'd think I'd actually need a level in science or armorer to actually do this but considering you can pick up the mods for free by just walking around and doing the missions in order to actually build a robot workstation then yeah it's very simple. No longer do you need science or even brains to become the most experienced man in the universe. Alright you know what I think we've done a good job so let's back on out of this menu and see just how much experience we've managed to generate. Oh there we go the experience meter is filling up on the left hand side of my screen. Oh we've hit level 42. Right so we've just gone from level 16 to level 42 by moving a assaultron chest on and off a random exploiter bot 9000. This is completely and utterly stupid. I mean naturally in the process we had to take off all of our clothes but that's just how it often works with exploits. All right let's open up that perk chart. We've got 27 perks to choose from. Okay um, I'm gonna get the next level in Idiot Savant because that's gonna increase our XP generation. Oh my goodness what a mess. I should also probably increase my melee weapon skills so that I now do 60% more melee damage and now 80% more melee damage. Oh and I can now deal double damage with a melee weapon. Look at that fantastic. I mean actually doing double damage with a weapon that one hits every enemy in the game probably isn't going to make much of a difference but you know I just love statistics. Sure when you have a weapon that does 500 damage and kills everything instantaneously that's brilliant but what if you had a weapon that did a thousand damage and killed enemies instantaneously? Now that's the kind of stuff which I like. I mean with all of these stats what on earth can we do? I suppose we can boost up our damage resistance so it's much harder to actually murder us and we can boost up our endurance a whole bunch. Naturally I'm going to pick up some pretty crazy perks. We're going to be grabbing up the rooted perk which gives us a whole bunch of additional damage resistance. I'm expecting to toughness so we have even more damage resistance and the main reason I'm doing this is because I have an upcoming idea in Fallout 4 which is to turn Rihanna O'Keefe from the incredible one hit highly experienced man that he is and turn him into a character which has the ability to take no damage. Now to actually pull this off is going to take a huge amount of work and so I'll probably have to save it for the next video but for the time being let's take our brand new perks for a swing. Right welcome back ladies and gentlemen I've been abusing the exploit a little bit more so that Rihanna O'Keefe is now an incredible level 69. Uh, his HP is now at 700 because of how high level he is. Equally his resistances are insane and even though he is wearing some of the most basic armor in the game he is almost impossible to murder which is absolutely brilliant. Now to make things a little bit more balanced I'm not going to be using the most powerful stabber and one hitting everyone. I will instead be using the humble security baton as my weapon of choice for this next engagement which is some kind of super mutant camp. I mean just look at all of these spooky guys. We've got a super mutant hound here and oh no we're taking all this damage. Well luckily provided when we're standing still we have huge amounts of resistances and we can just kind of slam away here. There we go and there we go the hound is dead. Lovely stuff. Oh hello there super mutant overlord. Let me back you into a corner and then melee you to death. Of course I have a very high chance of disarming you with every hit. There we go so we're just gonna wail away using our very basic little security baton here. There we go nice and simple stuff. I mean it's not too fancy, it's not quite an immediate one hit kill but it's pretty close to the good stuff. I mean this guy has incredible quantities of resistance, just look at all of that. Right, let's do a little vats on him. Oh lovely stuff Rihanna keeps. let's do a critical. Oh nice critical boop right there. And there we go, super mutant overlord defeated, glorious success has been had. Now that we defeated him, we've lost a little bit of health but of course whenever you lose health, now Rihanna keeps can just regenerate the health by eating it. Mmm, tasty tasty corpses. Let's also eat this super mutant over here, lovely tasty tasty 
tasty corpse. Mmm, nom 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 nom. It's very nice, honestly. You see, Rihanna keeps us on a bit of a ketogenic diet at the moment, which means um, human meat as well as super mutants is definitely on the menu. Now, let me just boop you a bunch. Oh my goodness, these poor super mutants, they were not designed to defeat us. Mmm. Tasty, tasty, tasty. Right, let's get in this lovely little elevator. I'm not too sure where it's going to take me, but hopefully uh, towards some enemies. Yep, that's exactly where we are. Now, of course, I need to get into combat and then stand still, because when I stand still, I take almost no damage. And then, of course, because of the way my character's built, getting into any place using VAT is a brilliant way of just cheesing all the combat, because every time I get a hit off, I generate a lovely and healthy quantity of critical. Actually not. Maybe we can switch out for the most powerful stabber. Let's give this a go. And do a critical little chainsaw. There we go. Oh, it is very powerful with this little weapon. Okay, I really shouldn't use it too much. All right, critical chainsaw, and he's dead. Lovely. He did give us a super sledge. Now, that would be interesting. 240 damage this bad boy does, apparently. Yep, I think this is the one we're going to be using. Now, of course, remember, base damage is not 240, but thanks to the lovely shenanigans and perks we've got, 240 damage is very achievable. You know, all in all, I'd say good, successful fight against the super mutants. They're very good. Although, generally I could do with a little bit more health, yes. I think maybe eating a few more corpses is the way to go. And whilst we're pretty good at resisting damage, we still haven't achieved the rate of immortality. It is possible, and I do have one part of the puzzle piece, but we're going to need oh so much more. Because in this game, damage resistance isn't actually a straight up you are immune to damage, it's just another way for this game to calculate how much damage you should receive from an attack. What really keeps you immune is damage reflection, but this is a very difficult stat to actually get and hardly anyone has it. And so whilst we don't have access to it just yet, we do have access to a whole bunch of tasty corpses here. Mmm, lovely. Tasty, tasty, tasty. Oh, I can hear some gunshots off in the distance. That's brilliant. And what's that, a nuclear bomb explosion? Perfect. There's fun happening over here. Also, if it's a gun, then it's probably a human. And that's perfect because humans, well, you know what that means. Tasty human corpses instead. Oh, yes, it's a human. Right, come here, human. Allow me to say hi to you. Yes, yeah, shoot me point blank. It's not going to do much. Oh, my God goodness, I love this. I really like this sledgehammer. <laughs> oh, we could one-hit everything. Right, where are you? You're down there. You're a super mutant. Right, well, I'm gonna have to get a little bit closer, but luckily, due to the way Vats is set up, I can actually just teleport across the map and do that. All it takes is having a few perks, and you can travel incredible distances and do melee damage. But equally, the further you travel, you get a percentage boost to the amount of melee damage you do. So because this guy is pretty far away, we can actually, you know, hit him and do a huge, nice little bit of damage. You know, let's take a critical and we're bam that's a one hit of a super mutant overlord lovely stuff oh my this isn't a very good location this is a whole bunch of angry raiders oh no my poor friends you don't know what you've accidentally caused oh right so the best thing is you can kind of lock onto almost all of them and i'm going to be able to one hit three enemies all in one go all in vats this is basically a recreation of the teleports behind you meme because all we have to do teleport behind our enemies don't have to be close just phase across the map and suddenly I'm standing next to you. It's so silly. Oh, I really like this game. I really do. Now, as I mentioned in the future, we're going to be trying to create the ultimate immortality build, but in order to create it, we're going to need a whole bunch of special items like this, the punishing raider right leg. It reflects 10% of melee damage back on the attacker, meaning every time we get hit, 10% of the damage that we would receive never happens and is instead given straight back to the person who dished it out. But this is only one leg. We need to get a whole lot better. What is this guy? Just some random guy eating noodles. Now we found this random scam artist here trying to get us to invest in his fake currency. Of course, um, we're not going to invest in it. Instead, we're going to uh, one hit this level 10 character with one resistance. Yeah, this guy is going to die in one shot and that's him done. Yep, that's, um, that's completely dead. My goodness. And then what we can do is crouch down and we can enjoy eating his lovely corpse after he tried to sell us his fake currency. Lovely stuff and fantastic. That's what you get for trying to scam Rihanna O'Keeves. Oh my goodness, what is this? A random junk bot. Okay, you look pretty interesting, my friend. And one hit. Okay, right, not so interesting. That is a shame. But you did just give me a brand new Assaultron torso, which I can use to exploit the game. So I guess, thank you. Right, you need to die. And you need to die, my friend. Oh, hello there, Rust Devil, my friend. Things aren't looking so great for you. You're a level nine enemy and you're dead. 
Um, yeah, this is a bit of an issue when you get this high level. Everything dies pretty much immediately because you have some incredible perks, the enemies don't perfectly scale to your level, and also your health is at such an incredible point that it's pretty much impossible for you to actually die, which is exactly how we like it. Right, I'm gonna go water my way into this lovely raider camp. This looks brilliant. Hello there. Sorry, raider waster, my friend, but you're a one hit. What's this, a random turret? You're also a one hit, my friend. Oh my goodness, I'm getting attacked by a whole bunch of angry people. Hello there Raider Psycho, you're also dead. I have taken a bit of damage but it's okay because I can just eat the corpses. Scientists would say that this is pretty unhealthy and I should probably just stick to using the stim packs which I find off of the corpses but to those people, no. Where's the fun in gaining your health in any way which isn't considerably damaging to your reputation in society? Hello there Legendary Raider my friend. Oh my goodness, you're going to take two hits to kill? Very well, two hits to kill it is. Oh but you've just mutated. Oh no. No, you're going to have to take a critical hit to be almost one shot and there we go two hits to kill Oh and fantastic now we gain a bolstering metal left arm It's not quite the item I was looking for but it'll do and then poor little raider waster my friend Wabushk. Oh my goodness. I really do feel like a god now. Rihanna keeps you are one heck of a terrifying character Remind me to never get on the wrong side of you, please. All right and ladies and gentlemen That's it for today's episode. We've converted Rihanna keeps from being a level 15 scrub in the lovely world of Fallout 4 and taken him into the realms of godhood and given him so many perks he's basically a one-hit machine. He's very difficult to kill, he does insane amounts of damage and with his arsenal of one-hit weapons he's pretty damn terrifying. But of course his journey hasn't finished yet ladies and gentlemen. So if you'd like to see more Riano Keeves and want to discover how we can create a immortal character in the world of Fallout 4 then hop down into the comment section and give me a shout. Equally if you want to see his return to Skyrim for another fantastical and ludicrous exploit then vote B in the comment section instead of A for Fallout 4, or if you want to see something Crusader Kings 3 then vote C because I've discovered some even more incredible exploits for that game. Trust me, it is so broken beyond imagination, I absolutely love it. Anyway, as always, a massive thank you to each and every one of our majestic patrons who make these videos all the more possible. Seriously, without you guys, none of this would be possible, so thank you very much. And as always, if you enjoyed what you saw here today, then do consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed, and if you're feeling especially fancy, then you might want to consider watching another one of my videos displayed on screen here because trust me they're going to be absolutely perfect for you. Anyway I've been the Spiffing Brit ladies and gentlemen have an absolutely lovely day and that's goodbye for now.